Hi all, this is a full guide to the Norm Regan Pet Battle Dungeon. To get started, you'll need to pick up the breadcrumb quest Trouble in Norm Regan from Dana Pool for the Alliance or Radak Fuselock if you're Horde. I'll leave a list of all the pets used in the description. Completing the dungeon the first time will award an ultimate battle training stone and the mana poof's portal. The second time, like the other pet dungeons, will be the challenge mode where you are unable to heal your pets. Completing it this way will award the achievement and the mini spider tank pet. This was recorded on the PTR so is subject to change. Drop a comment below if any of the strats don't work when it's live. The first battle you encounter will be against the Anoyotron. For this you'll need a cinder pup with a volcano. Your second pet is any critter pet with a speed above 280 with stampede. And your final pet, just as backup, is any level 25 pet with burn. Start with your cinder pup and cast volcano. Annoyotron will use annoying shield, but your volcano will still be applied. After casting volcano, swap to your stampede pet. And you guessed it, cast Stampede. Once Stampede is finished, Swap back to your cinder pup and cast Volcano again. And then swap back to your Stampede pet and cast Stampede again. If you're getting lucky with some bad RNG and this pet is defeated before I know your Tron, use your final pet and cast Burn to finish up. After defeating the Annoyotron, we enter stage 2. Click on the teleporter to move to the next zone. Here there is three battles we need to complete. The two backline pets in each of these battles are random from a set of seven. I like to take a bunch of shield hatchlings with leech life, sticky web and stone skin, frogs with water jet, healing wave and swarm of flies, and some saplings or sproutlings to counter the mechanical pets, which five of the seven random pets are. I'd recommend bringing a few of each of these in case bad things happen. These three battles can be done in any order. I like to start with a living napalm. For this, you'll need a snail, higher the power and health the better, with absorb, shell shield and headbutt, and then your favorite pets for dealing with the random backline pets. I went with a shield hatchling with leech life, sticky web and stone skin, and a frog with water jet, healing wave and swarm of flies. Start with your snail and cast shell shield. Now use absorb until shell shield has one round remaining and then refresh it. Use headbutt after the living napalm has used its heal. Otherwise just keep shell shield active and absorb to fill until the living napalm is defeated. Your snail will usually have nearly full health when the living napalm dies. As the backline pets are random from the seven shown before, it's hard to make any kind of strategy for it. However, just try to keep any heals rolling, damage reduction active, and swap in and out pets to suit the situation.
Once the living napalm is defeated, the living sludge is next. Here I use an Anubis off idle with crush, sandstorm and rupture and then two of the recommended cleanup pits. I went with the same as the previous battle but took a fresh frog. So we are Anubis off idle and cast sandstorm. Now simply use sandstorm cooldown and crush and rupture to fill until the sludge is defeated. Once defeated, you will again be presented with two from seven of the random pets. As mentioned before, it's impossible to predict what you'll get, so just use whichever pet and ability is needed for the situation. And the final battle in stage 2 is against the living permafrost. For this one you'll need a leviathan hatchling with water jet, toxic skin and primal cry and then your cleanup pets. I kept the same from the previous battle as they were at full health. Start with your hatchling and cast toxic skin. Followed by water jet. then a second water jet. Toxic Skin will be doing a fair amount of damage back to the permafrost now due to taking damage from all the frostbite debuffs. After the second water jet, cast Primal Cry. And then refresh Toxic Skin. The permafrost will just die from all the damage Toxic Skin is doing. Once the permafrost is defeated, do whatever damage you can with your hatchling before it's defeated. Use Primal Cry and Cooldown, keep Toxic Skin active and Water Jet to fill. And if needed, clean up with your remaining pets.
Once you've completed the three battles, you'll enter stage three, where you need to battle against the door control console. For this, I use a snow there for hatchling, with Falcazor Swarm, Crouch, and Predatory Strike. Your second pet is a Coastal Scuttler, with Pinch, Stampede, and Bubble. And your final pet, a Swamp Croaker, or similar pet, with Water Jet, Croak, and Bubble. Having a speed above 262 is recommended. Start with your snow feather and cast Crouch. Followed by Falcosaur Swarm. Predatory Strike. and then another Falcosaur Swarm. Sometimes your Snow Feather can be defeated at the same time as the Napalm Carrier. If this was the case, cast Stampede with your Coastal Scuttler. If your Snow Feather hit the Freeze Ray Robot Prototype with Falcosaur Swarm and then was defeated, cast Pinch with your Coastal Scuttler until the Freeze Ray Robot Prototype's Ice Tomb has one round remaining. Here you need to cast Bubble to avoid this. If in doubt, just cast Pinch until Ice Tomb has one round remaining and then use Bubble. After using Bubble, either cast Stampede or Pinch until if and when your Coastal Scuttler is defeated. Once the Freeze Ray Robot Prototype is defeated, the Sludge Disposal Unit enters. If your Scuttler is still alive, use Bubble if available and then Stampede, followed by Pinch if possible. If your Swamp Croaker is in the battle, cast Bubble and then Croak and Water Jet until the fight is won. Use Water Jet or Croak before Bubble if there's a Shattered Defenses debuff active. Once the door control console is defeated, the door will open, jump in the bomb stomp at 5000 and make your way down the tunnel. Once you reach the end, you'll be presented with two battles against a cockroach and a leper rat. These are the same as the random backline pet versions. Each of these battles then has two of the seven random pets for the backline, same as with previous battles. I'll start with a cockroach. Here I used a shale hatchling with a speed above 261 with leech life, sticky web and stone skin, and then two cleanup pets. This time I went with a forest sproutling with club, leech seed and Sons of the Root, and a frog, again with Water Jet, Healing Wave, and Swarm of Flies. Start with your Shale Hatchling, and cast Stone Skin. Now here, if your Hatchling didn't start with full health, you can cast Sticky Web, followed by Leech Life, to get back to full health. With Stone Skin active, you won't take any damage from the Cockroach. Once back to full health, just keep Stone Skin active, and spam Sticky Web, until the cockroach is defeated. Be aware of the apocalypse debuff as this is quite a slow way to defeat any of these pets. Once the cockroach is defeated, clean up the random two pets.
For the leopard rat, go with any rabbit with a speed above 302 with flurry, dodge and stampede and then your clean up pets. Start with dodge followed by stampede Once Stampede has finished, cast Flurry. This should put the Leper Rat into its undead round. Here, just cast Dodge. Once the Leper Rat is defeated, do as much damage as you can with your Rabbit before it is defeated. Try to leave a Shattered Defense debuff on the active pet for your cleanup pets to have some bonus damage. Once you've defeated both of these battles, a bloated leper rat will block the doorway. For this you'll need a ghastly kid with haunt, an infected squirrel with stampede, creeping fungus and corpse explosion, and a dire big hatchling with falcosaur swarm, iron skin and predatory strike. Start with your ghastly kid and cast haunt. After Haunt has hit, bring in your Infected Squirrel, cast Creeping Fungus, followed by Stampede, Once Stampede has finished, cast Corpse Explosion. If you are still alive after using Corpse Explosion, which can sometimes happen if you were put into your undead round on the same turn, you get another turn. If this was the case, use Stampede. After using Corpse Explosion, bring in your Diabeak, cast Iron Skin, followed by Falcosaur Swarm, and then predatory strike. Once the bloated leper rat's undead round is finished, it takes your pet with it. So as long as you have two pets alive, you will win.
After defeating the bloated leopard rat, the door opens and you have the last three pets to deal with before the end boss. I'll start with the Norma Regan Guard Mechano Strider. For this I used a shield hatchling with the usual abilities, leech life, sticky web and stone skin, a frog, again with the same abilities as previous fights, and this time a ruby sapling with iron bark, thorns and photosynthesis. Or you could take poison branch instead of thorns. Start with your shale hatchling and cast stone skin. Followed by sticky web. Then leech life. Followed by another sticky web. And another leech life. Then just repeat this over and over until the guard mechano strider is defeated. So that was stone skin, followed by sticky web, leech life, a second sticky web, a second leech life, and then refresh stone skin. Once the Mechano Strider is defeated, you get the usual two of the seven random backline pets. A tip for the sapling is to cast Photosynthesis and then just spam Iron Bark, as Iron Bark does nice damage against mechs and also gives you damage reduction all in one spell. Next up is the Norma Regan Guard Wolf. For this one we'll be using an Ambitious with Crush, Flamethrower and Volcano and then the usual cleanup pets. 
I kept the same as the previous fight. Start with Abyssius and cast Volcano. And then spam Flamethrower until the Guard Wolf is defeated. Once the wolf is defeated, do whatever damage you can with Abyssius before it's defeated. Use Volcano on cooldown and then Crush or Flamethrower to fill, whichever does the most damage on the current active pet. And finally, the Norma Regan Guard Tiger. In your first slot, Mr. Bigglesworth, with Pounce, Frost Nova, and Ice Tomb, and then your cleanup pets. This time, I went with a frog and a forest sprouting. Start with Mr. Bigglesworth and cast Ice Tomb, followed by Pounce. Second pounce, followed by Frost Nova. We use Frost Nova here as Ice Tomb is about to hit and do a nice chunk of damage to the Tiger, who will then want to use Fear and Death and swap out. We want to prevent this, and that's what Frost Nova does, stops it from fleeing. Now just use Pounce until the Tiger is defeated. Once the tiger is defeated, do whatever damage you can with Mr. Bigglesworth before it is defeated. Use Ice Tomb and Frost Nova on cooldown and pounce to fill. Once Mr. Bigglesworth is defeated, use your cleanup pet to finish up the fight. A tip for the Sproutling is to use Leech Seed just before Sons of the Root, so you can heal up a little without taking damage for a few rounds. And then Leech Seed will be nearly off cooldown when you emerge.
Once the three guard pets are defeated, the shadowy figure appears and does a bit of roleplay. Once the roleplay is finished, we have the final battle against the Pulverizer bot Mark 6001. For this I used a flying pet with Flock, which needs a speed of at least 309, and a decent damage ability just in case of some bad RNG. Your second pet is a Magma Rageling, with Flamethrower, Flame Jet, and Volcano, and your final pet an Autumnal Sproutling with Leech Seed and Sons of the Root. This needs to have the same or more health than your Magma Rageling. Start with your Flock pet and cast Flock. The Pulverizer bot will use the biggest hammer and force in your lowest health pet, which should be your Magma Rageling. With your Magma Rageling in the battle, cast Volcano, followed by Flame Jet, and then use Flamethrower until defeated. Once defeated, bring in your flock pet again, and again cast flock. You'll likely get swapped back out and your sprouting forced in. With your sprouting in the battle, cast leech seed followed by sons of the root. I did it the wrong way around here just to see if sons of the root would be enough to finish up the fight alone, which it didn't. For my thoughts on this pet dungeon, I quite like it, however I'm not a big fan of the amount of random backline pets, and in some cases the amount of damage they can do. Those with less experience may find them fairly frustrating. Hopefully they'll change them to green quality, or get rid of the random nature, so we know what to expect for each fight. As for the actual fights, the stage 2 pets I think are too easy, and should be buffed, but only if the random 2 of the 7 pets are nerfed. Other than those points, it was a lot of fun to work out. I hope you enjoyed this video, and thanks for watching.